Hello friends and welcome to a new series by Shubhra Ranjan IAS. The previous series on India and the world was highly commend, uh, you know, appreciated by all of you. The kind of comments, the kind of support, uh, the number of likes and all of that really made us feel that we, you know, we could contribute to your journey towards UPSC mains. Now, we are here with a new series called Democracy Key Part Shala. And uh, the series is basically at the background of the uh, state assembly elections that are going to take place in this year. Uh, five states, major states, are going for elections. And uh, this is seen to be a precursor to the 2024 general elections. So elections seem to be the flavor now. And uh, the idea or the virtue behind elections, behind democracy, is so serious that uh, it is important to understand uh, what exactly democracy or what or how elections take place in India. And this is the purpose of this series. We are here not only for uh, students. Of course, students, uh, a question on elections are always there in UPSC. But this is much beyond that. The seriousness of the topic goes to each and every citizen of India who is uh, allowed to vote or uh, who is going to vote uh, in 2024. So this message or these questions are just to educate uh, you all, all the viewers out there. And this is a very small contribution from the Shubhra Ranjan family towards Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, the year that India is turning 75 years of independence. With this, let's uh, start with the questions. Ma'am, uh, what exactly is democracy. Okay. So as you rightly said that uh, we are now uh, entering into the phase where elections are going to be a major issue in the public discourse starting with uh, the assembly elections and then the next election for parliament. So it makes a lot of sense to understand the importance of elections but to understand the importance of elections it is also very important to understand the importance of democracy because elections have to be understood in a context uh, you have to understand that uh, elections do take place in China also but China is not democracy so we are talking about elections in a democratic country what is the purpose behind those elections? As your first basic question is that what is democracy? Because to understand the significance of elections, we have to understand democracy. So democracy can be understood at two levels. In a very substantive or in its normative sense, democracy aims at giving voice to the voiceless, power to the powerless means democracy aims at empowerment of the people because empowerment of the people is closely connected to the question of human dignity and I need not to explain the importance of human dignity. But in a narrow sense and in a more conventional understanding, democracy is about a type of a political system where the power lies in the hands of the people. Accountability and transparency are the hallmark of democracy. So if I talk from general to very particular context in India, the importance of democracy go much beyond, I believe, than any other country. Because for people in India, democracy is actually a dream. Fine. And uh, our constituent assembly, they felt that democracy is going to be the major means and the vehicle through which we will be able to transform this country into a modern, vibrant and an integrated entity. So the meaning of democracy goes much beyond any other country if I talk about India and I am proud to say that uh, India is uh, the most successful democracy if I talk about the third world countries. Uh, 
So from where you left, uh, let us come to the fact that, that the world order is changing. And uh, India was proudly uh, invited to the uh, Democracy Summit last year. So ma'am, what are the kind of debates that exist around India's democracy? Yeah, so there are a lot many debates. Uh, the very first debate is whether it was uh, the right decision that we went for democracy. The students of political science, they know the debate between Lee Kuan Yew and Amartya Sen and uh, the debate is whether the China model or India model which is appropriate for democracy and uh, persons like Lee Kuan Yew, they believe that democracy brings indiscipline, democracy delays the decision making process and uh, for uh, developing countries or for the post-colonial societies, uh, authoritarianism or soft authoritarianism can be a better option and he appreciates uh, uh, the China model. Besides this, there is a historical debate that begins with J.S. Mill who says that uh, the societies uh, where uh, where the people are not democratic, where democratic culture does not exist, uh, for example, these uh, countries like India, even if we will introduce democracy, they will be false democracies. They can never be true democracy because first democracy has to, uh, first we have to have a democratic society. So in this context, there is a, another point of view. Uh, again, I would like to quote Amartya Sen who says that rather than making people fit for democracy, we have to make people uh, fit through democracy. Fine. So this is another debate. Now, there is another very important issue that India's democracy is still not a substantive democracy and it is primarily a procedural democracy. Now procedural democracy is still, uh, we have many strengths, but there are so many flaws in India's procedural democracy. For example, still it is believed that India's uh, electoral system, uh, there is a role of money and muscle power. I can quote uh, uh, one of the scholar Christophe Jeffrey Lott who writes that in India, people are not under the rule of law, they are under the rule of money. So these type of issues also come up as far as our democracy is concerned. At times, uh, uh, political scholars like Rajini Kothari and others also talk about the institutional decline that had started uh, primarily in post-Nehruvian eras. So if I talk about the problems, there are many, but uh, at the same time, I believe it is a part and parcel uh, of a country like India with tremendous diversity, uh, colonial legacy and itself it is not a mean achievement that uh, in India the changes in the rulers have been through the democratic means so let's not be overtly but excessively pessimistic let's look at the positive side too but definitely there is a lot of things that needs to be reformed and uh, to fulfill the project to fulfill the idea of India. Uh, you know, there, of course, there are problems, ma'am, and uh, we really have to work hard to make uh, Indian democracy a success. But, you know, before we go on to the negatives and the positives, we need to go back to history. And uh, this is where I would like to ask, ma'am, why did India choose democracy? Wasn't it the tough road ahead at the time of independence? Yeah, uh, we have chosen democracy. Uh, I believe that uh, considering India's diversity and the type of the disagreements we had on a lot of issues, uh, democracy was the best way out to sort out the differences. The other reason I believe that uh, the Indian elite of that time, uh, they were educated in the Western and primarily the British system of education and uh, there was a distinct tilt uh, or rather influence of the liberal uh, education. And uh, again, if I uh, talk about Amartya Sen and his book, Argumentative Indian, uh, he points out that uh, it's not that uh, 
democracies entirely western in origin india also had a tradition of uh, democracy he mentions about the buddhist monastery and uh, i think uh, anybody who starts upsc preparation goes for ncert history books and uh, the ancient history books talk about sabha and samiti we had a vibrant system of panchayati raj so it's both uh, external as well as indigenous as well as the situational factors and uh, our uh, constituent assembly thought that democracy is going to be the best practicable form of government for india uh, ma'am in the previous answer uh, you had mentioned about procedural democracy ma'am could you just explain in a bit more detail uh, what are the types of democracy that we see around the world okay so first of all you have to understand the end of democracy fine so the ultimate objective of democracy is empowerment of the people but how to achieve that end for that you need procedures you need institutions you need mechanisms so as far as the procedural democracy is concerned obviously election free and fair election i will say comes as the foundation because through elections we choose our representative which are expected to represent our will and that will is to be reflected in the laws which govern us another uh, very important institution to maintain the fidelity of democracy is the independent judiciary freedom of press which itself is uh, very very important and uh, if i talk about indian constitution then india cons indian constitution uh, takes i think uh, the democracy issue and its procedures and institution all the more seriously because i believe that perhaps india is the first country where uh, the election commission has been given the constitutional status where the delimitation exercises uh, they are supposed to be uh, quite autonomous exercises and uh, so uh, this is one thing now the next thing is you are talking about the types of democracies so types of democracies uh, there can be different ways to classify uh but one general way is to understand the direct democracy and representative democracy so a uh, direct democracy where people themselves participate in the formulation of laws in india that idea has been introduced with 73rd amendment act with the institution of gram sabha now next is the representative democracy where people choose their representatives uh, the thing is in that uh, the modern complex way of life uh, solely direct democracy is not possible and that is why we have to go for the next alternative that is representative democracy but again uh, there is a lot of scope to improve keep on improving representative democracy uh, so that either through the electoral reforms through the electoral system through voter awareness and many ways that our representative democracy it becomes representative in true sense representing the different sections and most important uh, giving vulnerable section a voice that is the beauty of democracy representation of plurality that is the true essence of democracy the true essence of elections With this we wrap up the first class of democracy ki paathshala before we end i would like to leave you all with a quote by us president johnson who said that the vote is the most powerful weapon uh, instrument actually that has been devised by man to fight injustice this will lead us to the next session wherein we'll be talking about the basics of elections especially in india Thank you all for joining us in today's class of democracy. Mm -hmm.